So I have your location performance pulled up. And the first thing that we saw, like we saw last time, was that you're just under about 70 accounts every month, and we're canceling more than you know than you're signing up. So what's I mean, the, go what's ahead. the MTV? What's the what? A MTV, right up here. This is up. This is this month, right here. So so far for this month, you've canceled 70. You only signed up 33. Oh, I see. Okay. What's all the stuff after it? Oh, it's just a percentage of, I got it. Yep, it's going down, going up. So, um, okay. so the other, let's see your average month your members are staying. So wait, this is number we've one. canceled, hold on a second. So let me see. So total accounts, new accounts, canceled accounts. So we lost 40 members in in March, and then we lost, oh my God, 40 members in April, and then we lost, uh, what is that, like 14 in May? But it's 16 and in May, birth. yep. And then in and June, you absolutely moved nowhere. You just went zero. My, oh my God, this is so bad. <laughs> so, but this is good because most people don't even realize this. They're just going around and around in a circle. They just attack sales, which is okay, but without this other knowing what you're losing, it's like you're in a boat with a leak and you're just constantly just, just you know, with a bucket, throwing it out, and the leak's just coming in, you're going nowhere. So but at least that you're one seeing One question it. I got real quick for you is yeah. under total members in March. Okay. We had 432, then April 464, May 538, and June 583. So the reason why it's, this is this is different than accounts because an account can have two members, three members, four members, five members. An account is different than a member because I can have one account that adds five members. You understand? Yeah, but I don't think we have very many like that. This is just showing everybody that's in your system that's green. It doesn't mean that you have 583 accounts. You may have only have. Um, you know, like right here, it says 581 accounts. And remember, these aren't all month to month. These are all mixed of prepaids and um, monthlies and everything like that. Right, right. But so they're terms and, and EFTs all together. Correct. And everybody that's at your club. Uh, but the other thing that really, besides this right here, that needs to be worked on big time is your member length. So this is saying that your average member in March was staying three and a half months. And then in April, it looks like it's been getting better. So whatever you guys are doing, it, keep it up because you're, you're doing better, where in April, people were staying for 4.8 months, about five months, then May it went up another month, and in June, uh, pretty much stayed the same. But um, you know, you, you, the next month, this month, they're staying six and a half months. So this is saying, as of today, your average member staying six and a half months. You obviously want now, to get how much that. Does that have to do with too that we're just starting to use the system pretty recently. Sure. And the other thing too is right away. So what I would do is totally. I would limit prepaids. I would maybe once you get reach your EFT goal for the month, then I would release like five or ten prepaids. Because prepaids is going to do you in when the, the name of the game is setting up EFT, which is what we're after right now. Sometimes they just won't do it, and they don't want to lose the money, so we just take it. Okay. So what you, you, what you have is uh, for that, and I, I've had that at, well also at the gym, I let people that, let's say they go, you know what, I, I don't want to sign up on a monthly membership. I don't want my credit card on file. That's fine. We have a membership for that. It's called a one-month limited-term membership. It's $75. And the reason why it's $75 is because once you're done, you have to, your account gets canceled and you have to sign up all over again. Or you don't have to make it 75 but I would make it double whatever your monthly is. So let's say your yeah, monthly... Yeah, it is expensive. I mean, it's 52 bucks. It is a lot more. How much is your month-to-month -month membership? It's... We either do... depend. Well, we have two, basically. If they sign up with a, a minimum of a year um, and then it goes into a month-to-month, -month, it's it's 35 a That's month, a contract, and if they right? just want to cancel within 30-day notice, then it's 40 bucks a month. 
Okay, there you go. So that's your month to month is forty bucks a month. So what I would make the one month limited term membership, I would make it fifty nine dollars and say this is for people that just want to buy one month at a time. At the end of the month the membership cancels and you come back whenever you want and then you buy another one. If you want to go monthly, you could save some money and choose our month to month membership. Now you could still pay us cash. We will never not accept cash. So let's, let's get that out of your head. What this, is, what this membership is, it has to have a credit card on file in case you forget to come in and pay cash. That, that's all this membership is saying. You can still cancel whenever you want, and it's only $39.50. Um, but I, um, you know, you ha if you don't want to put a credit card on file, you have to buy the limited term one month membership that cancels at the end of the month. I like that. And just take away the rest of the options. That's it. You have you have your month to month. You have your um, you have your term, which is your thirty five dollars. It's a twelve month term, and then you have your one month limited term membership. For people that absolutely do not want to put a credit card on file, uh, is, is put, just make it fifty nine fifty, and make your I would I would change your monthly membership to thirty nine fifty because uh, it, it is very much known that once you receive once you go above a certain dollar type, and that's usually around forty dollars. If people are not using something, they start to use that, uh, that monthly membership dues and they start associating with other bills in their life. So let's say they're not using the gym and it's at $40. That's something you notice on your credit card. They go, well, if I cancel a gym, which I'm not using anyway, I could put that towards my cell phone bill, then my cell phone bill is only like $40 a month. So you want to just go right under that $40 price point and hit to like $39.50. Okay, okay. That sounds um, good. Yep, and then plus it also makes that one month limited term membership to where they go. Well, I don't want to spend fifty nine fifty on a, on a one month membership. I want to spend the thirty nine fifty. Well, absolutely, you can, and it's month to month. I would love to sign you up. And guess what? Every month you could pay cash. But we just need to put your credit and card in file. Cash, then you just put it under membership dues, and even like say yeah. they're early, say they're early like five days. You put it on membership dues, and it gives them a positive in their account, right? Correct. Yes. It'll actually show up as a negative, but that means positive. So when it goes to try and charge the card, it sees that there's a credit and it takes off the credit instead of off their card. Got it. Okay. So, and, and remember, that's why most people don't sign up on a month-to-month -month membership that involves credit cards is because they think they can't pay cash. So as soon as you, you, you just confirm to them and say, yes, absolutely, you come in every single month to pay cash, that's what you wish. We just need a credit card in case you forget. So this way there's no late fees and it doesn't go into delinquent status, um, but you absolutely can pay cash every month. Now, our last gym, I think it was in business, that brand was for five years, and I've probably heard that about 20 times. And you're generally from the older population that, that's more worrisome about that. And every single person that signed up on a monthly membership, you know how many of them actually came in to pay cash? I don't think one person. Yeah, I, I doubt they actually would do it. Do you yep. think our price point's too high? Well, you are you guys are in California, right? Yeah. And as the price point is too high if you have a salesperson that doesn't know how to value sell. If you have a salesperson mm -hmm. that, has, that knows how to value sell, you, your price point could be $100 and people will sign up. And, and I could tell you this for a fact, and most people will be like, you're crazy. Look at CrossFit gyms. They're $100, $150 a month. People are signing up all the time. Um, because people think they're getting value when they're signing up there, whereas gyms are more generalized where you have a Planet Fitness, you have a Crunch, you have your brand gym where they just think it's treadmills, weights, ellipticals, and that's it. So a $10 a month one is going to do the same thing that your club is at 50 bucks. Well, that's where value selling comes into play, where the person and comes... You know what's weird is, is we get a lot of... We do get a lot... We don't have many people complain about the price. Very... Few, I would say like five percent. Well, as long as you're showing them value for price, that if they don't care if it, if they're going to pay twenty dollars extra, if that person at the end of the meeting when they come into their gym, they fully one hundred percent believe they will get into the way they the, the way they want to look at your place, they will pay twenty thirty dollars extra. Look at plastic surgery; thousands of dollars, and people do it because they know they're going to hopefully look the way they want to look. So people don't have a problem spending money. It's up to the salesperson's job to make them believe that they're going to get to the way they want to look at the end of that tour. If somebody walks through that door and, and, they, and they just have price going around and around in their head 
and you're coming up with a higher price and your salesperson just shows price right away, yes, of course, your price is too high because you ha you, there was no value sales there. If you sit the person down and you go over on what they want to change about themselves, elaborate on that, ask them how long they've been thinking about changing themselves, is the club close to their house? Uh, after the tour, does the club have everything you need? On the tour, put them on the machines that are going to help them change themselves to make themselves the way they want to look. At the end of that tour, that person no longer has price in their mind. They have, wow, I can get in shape here. This is going to help me get the way I want to look. And $20 extra a month isn't going to matter. And even if the person says, well, it's a little higher, more than I wanted to spend, the salesperson, if they do their job correctly, will ask how much is too much uh, for you to come to a gym that's close to your house um, that has everything you need that's clean enough for you. And they go, well, it's about $10 more money. Well, if it's $10 more a month, if it's a, if it's a competent salesperson, what they do is they'll take 30, divide it by 10, and then they break it. It's called breaking down to the ridiculous. And when you go, oh, I see, so what you're saying is a club that isn't busy, that has everything you need, that's close to your house, can save a lot of money and gas, but because it's about 20 cents more extra a day, that's going to stop you from getting to your health and fitness goals today? And then you just put <laughs> You see what That's I'm saying? Awesome. So, you right. know, the person basically feels stupid, and they're like, ah, you're right, and they burst out their wallet. But, but that, that sale would not happen unless that salesperson is trained to, to know that and say that. Yes. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's no, that's I'm a saying. great way to do it. That's a really great way to do it because that's probably what – you know, it's funny that you said that because of the people who do complain, they do say, well, about, you know – 25 a month is more what I had in mind, you know, which is, you know, 10, 15 bucks. But if you break it down like that, it's like 50 cents a day, really. Yeah, well, absolutely. So if our club's closer to your house, has everything you need, it's cleaner than the average uh, low dollar a month gym. Number one, you're going to be saving on gas. It's going to, you can have less of an excuse not to come here because it's shorter drive. And uh, yes, it's about 50 cents more a day, but it's close to your house. It's clean. It has everything you need. You don't have to wait on machines. Um, so 50 cents a day is going to help stop you from getting to your health and fitness goals. And then just shut up. You know, we used to do, I used to do that breakdown for people who would go down to Power Fitness. They, they lived in Scotts Valley, and they were yeah. driving down to Power Fitness, and, and they were paying, I don't know what they were paying. They were paying some cheap amount of money. They, it was like 10 bucks a day. Sure. And at the time, we were like 30. But I told them, I'm like, well, you know, it is 20 minutes each way of driving and if you take the gas prices what they are today and total that up times x amount of miles times blah 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 i figured out they were paying about 200 more a year for their membership right absolutely and, and it's, it's a, and not just to imagine, let's just throw away the gas price for a second it's a longer drive so you could take the most dedicated gym person at the end of their work day trust me the littlest excuse will prevent them from going to the gym they may go to the gym and they're like oh i gotta do it but if, so if you're telling me that you haven't worked out in over two years and you have a tiny excuse of a, of a 10, 15-minute drive going to the gym, you're sitting on your couch and you're watching CSI. You're not going to the gym. So did you really come in here to get the cheapest gym membership or did you come in here to get to your fitness goals and, and drop the weight that you said you did? Yeah, yeah. So, and again, that's experienced sales. So I'm looking at your new accounts here and I'm guessing – if there was 67 sold, you probably had about 150 walk-in. Um, if this one was sold, they probably had 125 walk-in. So you're missing out on a lot of money that, that's coming in if you're not selling oh, you're, that way. You're, you're saying that on the 67, we probably only sold like 50% of that. Right. So you, you, said you sold 67. I'm guessing at least 70 to 80, 90 people walked out the door. They came into your club. They looked around. They didn't see value when they left. Mm -hmm. I could guarantee it. And how could we have changed that more, just the, the right salesperson in front of them? Well, it, you, I'm not telling you to fire your salesperson. I'm just saying to find out why they're there. It's not price. Why are they there? So you have a good person where she's very likable. You just need to train her on sitting the person down before the tour and just finding out a little bit of information. And remember, all these questions that she's asking are just ammo for her for later when the person says they want to think about it. So when the person says they want to think about it, she can look on her pad and says, 
Eric, yeah, I totally understand. Most people feel that they have to think about it, but you recently told me you've been thinking about it for six months. You're two minutes away from the house. We're clean. We have everything you need. So what more do you feel you think about today? Is it the monthly investment or today's uh, the gym membership investment? Yeah. You know, if you, if you, don't, if you, if you can't say that, you're, you're done. You know, then, it, then you're price selling. And if you're price selling and you're more expensive, you're going to lose out 10 times. Um, yeah. So, you know, I actually applaud her for getting this many sales without, with, without value selling, you know. So, well, those, those, a lot of those sales are, are me and Mike, and the, those aren't all her sales. Okay. Um, but, I uh, mean, but the, the, the name of the game is for the gym to profit and for you not to be there except unless you want to work out, right? You don't want to work there. You want to, you want to be there unless just to have fun and work out and go home. Yeah. I mean, an um, owner shouldn't have to work at his own club. He should just sit home and, 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 and divide the profits between the other owners and go in when he wants to work out and just see what's going on every once in a while. That's my goal plan. That's what that's, I'd like to do. That's every owner's goal plan. It shouldn't be that the owner is a slave for himself and, you know, it's a stress factor every month and you're wondering, well, how do we have no money at the end of the month? Well, how come we're not profiting? That's not a way to have any business, where much less the gym business. And a little key of thing that you can do for your, for your, um, uh, your salesperson is it's, it's called calling in the numbers. So every day at 12, 3, and before she goes home, she has to call in the total sales and the EFT numbers. And you don't answer, it's just your voicemail. But the idea is it's basically micromanaging themselves. It's, it's putting a little bit of calculated stress on the salesperson. I know myself when I worked at gyms, and I had to call in numbers. If I had zero at 12 o'clock, next time I called in at three, I didn't want to have zero because I didn't want the owner thinking I was twiddling my thumbs on Facebook or whatever it is on my phone all day. And then I sure as hell didn't want the owner knowing that I zeroed out before I went home because it would make me feel like a puke and that I earned an hourly when I don't deserve it. That's how I felt when I had to do that. That's so funny because at the last gym I worked, the, the one of the owners was a sales guy, and he was, like you said, he never came in, and he just he called in every so often to see what was going on. Now, his brother was one of the other owners. He was the worker guy, and he, w he would actually call him, though, about three times during his shift to see how he was doing. Sure. And that's so funny because, yeah, John was always sweating it. He never wanted to give him a bad report. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's a good sales guy, though. That means he cares about the gym. And, that's, and, and this is a good gauge to see if your salesperson really cares. If they don't have a problem calling in a big, fat goose egg at the end of the night, then you might want to get a new sales guy. You know, like if I had to yeah. call in, I, I never once called in a goose egg. I would do whatever I had to do. I would sell a towel. I would work the member floor to get a family add-on anything before I had to call in a zero before I went home. And if I, if I, cause I know I wouldn't be able to sleep and I'd be apologizing for it the next day to the owner. And that's just how I felt. And, uh, yeah. you know, a little bit of calculated stress is good along with a, with a target, a daily target and a monthly goal. So there's a whole bunch of stuff we could fix in here, but I would say let's work on one thing and let's see where it goes next month. So the first thing that I would say is, Let's have her call on the numbers, 12, 3, and before she goes home, for total gross and EFT. Total gross and EFT. Right. Like total gross is everything sold in the gym for the day. Yep, yep. And then how much EFT that she uh, sold. Okay. So all the memberships adds all the monthly dues, and that's what, that's what EFT. So the other thing that we need to do is give her a monthly target. So... Her monthly target, so we're going to go off her 67. We'll do an average. So she's averaging about 50. So we're going to give her a monthly target of, I'm going to say, 75 memberships, which your average, uh, you only sell first month dues, right? Well, we do that first month plus maintenance. Okay. All right. So 75. So if we do 75. Do you hate, do you do you like a maintenance, hate a maintenance, not care? Which I, I wouldn't call it a maintenance, honestly. I would call it a uh, – I would just say I'm with this first and last month's dues because everything even besides the gym. 
Let me tell you why we did it. Um, we never used to do it, but the club, both both the other clubs do something similar. Um, the guy in Santa Cruz that I told you is really killing it on money mm -hmm. with 7,000 members. Well, he does a lot of cheap memberships. A lot of times they're like 10 bucks a month, 12 bucks a month, sometimes they're 15 Sometimes they're 20, like that snowflake. But he always does charge a maintenance, and every year he charges everybody there 50 bucks. It's like 49.95 okay. a year. Okay. And he loves it. And then he's the guy who told me to do it. And then the guy down the street does it. He charges 40, the guy who's opened up down the street from us. And then he also charges a sign-up fee of like 120. Okay. Um, so I mean, we could call it whatever. We throw it on there because How's it going so far? Nobody really complains about it too much. The the only thing is what a maintenance fee is, if you're going to charge it, you better do something to the gym. You better put new paint on the walls. You better bring a new piece of equipment in. You better recloth all the cracked vinyl if you're going to be charging that. And and we have been, so that's probably why people haven't been complaining about it. Okay, we, we are kind of constantly for the last year been just doing nothing but changes. Sure. Okay. So, all right, the other thing is I would pull prepaid except for that one month because we could see right here you sold 67 new accounts, but you only added $669 in prepaid. So if we pulled prepaid and we sold 67 accounts times 39 bucks, we'll say 35 because of the contract, um, you know, we're going to do 68 times 35. That's... What's um that's twenty three hundred dollars in dues and we only set up four uh we only set up six hundred sixty nine on this month when it should have been around twenty three hundred. What does that mean that six sixty nine? That means that's how much just, in EFT you set up. That's how much we added from last right. month to this month? That's yeah, in June you added six hundred sixty nine dollars in EFT, which for six hundred for sixty seven memberships is pretty much is really awful. That means that you sold like eighty percent prepaid because sixty seven memberships with your price range should be around twenty three hundred dollars in the FT instead gotcha. of sixty nine. So, so that's we're still what, a yeah, lot you, of prepaid. Yes, yeah, pull the prepaid only only leave that one month for the people that don't want to put their credit card on file, and uh, you'll and start selling more month to month um, and. I, Look this at is how gonna be your win. Mike was talking about how great we've been doing on getting people converted to EFTs, but if I look at it for March, April, May, and June, it's all pretty crappy. Yeah, this month you did 200. April you did 668, almost exactly to the DT for June. And then in May you went back down to 200. June you did 669. Uh, and then so far this month, which is almost over, you have four, $420. So... This should never be in the hundreds, especially with a gym your size. This should always be 2,000 plus. This is pretty enlightening. I, I really like these reports. This is great. Yeah. Well, it lets you really dissect you in, in your business to see what's going wrong, and it's just way you can plug these holes that are flooding the ship. A lot of these people don't have reports like this because, like your old software, they don't want you knowing this because then you could gauge how much money you're losing on their percentage that they're taking from your EFT. So we know if you're pulling $8,000 in EFT, $8,400, uh, you're going to get $8,400. You know, we only charge $175 a month for the software. We're not going to take $1,500 of this dues tap because you're using our software. So they don't want you seeing reports like this. But it's so crucial because you have to know this stuff to plug the holes of your sinking ship so this way you can be profitable again. And there's a lot of holes I'm here. But you can, we can't go to plug all of them at once, or else we're not going to get to any of them. We can only we can only see what's going on, and then have a plan of attack with maybe one or two things for next month. So what what I'm curious about is on March it goes from 4,900 to April 61, May 73, and then 84. That's the EFT right there. Yes, that's your monthly dues. So remember, this is also taking effect. You said you have a lot of prepays converting over to um, to month to month. This is new EFT setup. This is all will we'll come through the door okay. and buy okay. the membership. 
Gotcha. So a lot, but a lot of these 67 people could have been converting though from. No, this is anyone that hits the new membership button. Oh, uh, okay. I got you. So that is legitimately 67 new members, and so yeah. that's how we really tell how much we converted to new actual new EFTs. Yep, absolutely. So people so you are could... who are existing members and they're converting from terms to EFTs, we have been doing pretty good on that. So that's probably what Mike was talking about because actually we have been getting a lot of people to convert over from terms to EFTs. Also also remember this too, you're at $5,000 here and you added this. Also remember anyone that was delinquent that put their credit cards on file and pretty much you started with us this month. So it really, you really can't go off of this because you entered a bunch of people. There was a lot of updating of credit cards that looked like they were delinquent. So your real base is around seven to eight thousand. Right now it's at nine. So you're, you know, you're doing very well. You're up six hundred and sixty-nine dollars from the other month. Um, what I, all I would say is for right now because you're going up in monthly dues, is put a little bit of calculated stress on your sales girl. Have her call on the numbers. Um, you want to give her a monthly goal and break that down to a daily number so she can hit, you know, without a number, without knowing how much you're supposed to hit for the day, you're pretty much just shooting in the uh, shooting blanks and not aiming for anything. If I know I'm going into the gym and I know it needs to hit $700 for the day, every person that I see, I think in my head, how much can I get this person to take off of this $700? What can I sell them? Um, you know, whatever the case may be. Can I can I buy sell personal training? I think can the I, realistic number would be to try to have her hit. Well, so let's see. Um, so she's averaging around 50 sales um, a day. So if if you just take somebody that just learned English and knows how to present prices, they're going to sell at 50 members to 50% closing. You know, which is price selling. So you want her to go a little harder than normal. Her best that she's ever done was 67. I would shoot at a membership goal of um, 70. You know, it's, that's, that's, that's nothing. That's basically 67 was the most, she's the, her, the best month that was ever there, and it's only getting a couple extra. Usually you want to go on whatever your highest sales is and add 20% and leave it up to the manager to make those extra sales. You can't wait on the door. You have to do other things besides wait for people to come in. When there's not, when you're not doing a sale, what are you doing to, to attack that $500 daily goal? Are you, is Facebook going to help you attack that $500 daily goal? No. Then get off of it. Go to your member list. Go to your member list. Let's go. Yeah, I'm really happy to say, Anthony, that, that 67 probably, you know, I probably sold 20 of those. Mike probably sold. 20 some of those, Ron probably sold some, and then she sold the rest. So those sure. weren't just her sales. Okay, well, here is something that, that can be done for if, if the door isn't swinging. So this way, your sales guy doesn't go, oh, no one walked in for the day. No one walked in for the day is not an excuse not to sell anything. There's always a way to make a sale in the club, especially at a gym. So if the door is not swinging, people aren't walking through the door, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my member list. I'm going to uncheck the green members, the yellow members. I'm going to do red, canceled, and collections. I'm just going to get everyone that used to be a member, and I'm going to look up just anyone that has ever been a member at the gym before. So let's click update. You have 723 people that are canceled in the system that used to be members. And this right here tells you what kind of membership they had. And if you click on their name, you could, I could go, let's see this guy, Alex Alvarez. Okay, he was in a membership last, he was in a, uh, a contract last year. You have all of his contact info to get to this guy. You could say, I don't even care if your salesperson says, hey, my name is Stephanie, and I'm the marketing director over here at Scotts Valley Gym. We're having a get back in the game offer. I see you were a member here um, last year. We want to offer you that same membership at half price. This way, or you could sign up on a month-to-month -month membership for $1 to come back into the club. Would you like to take advantage of this? Mm -hmm. Unless, if this guy goes, yeah, let's take advantage of it, I check this out. I could just click the edit button. I could turn him into a month-to-month. -month. I click update. 
Oh, I'm gonna put. All right, let's say if we well, let's say we give them a twenty-five dollar a month payment, right? You can't buy that membership, but who cares? It's more twenty-five dollars more than you had yesterday. You know, this is this is free money right here. Who cares if it's twenty-five dollars or eighteen? Uh, we're gonna click update. So all we have to do is put the credit card information, charges card, whatever you want to charge him to start, or just select the day and he's done. You don't even need to do anything. I just made him a, a cancel member to a member in less than thirty seconds. Right, and that's great. Yeah, you know? and that's the thing we, we weren't really doing much of is, you know, we, we've we been relying on people to walk in the door, and, you know, when we get in a pinch, we'll make calls. You know, I, I sporadically have had people come in to make calls and try to get people in and offer specials, and we've done some Facebook booth specials and stuff like that. But we've just never had a really good, consistent salesperson, and, and we – we need to jump into that right away because we're just we've left so much money on the table it's ridiculous okay the other thing is if you're going to run a, like a special like let's say you go on your website you go to your settings membership so here so here we still have this facebook test membership that we started that was never put implemented uh you could make a, a website membership sign up for just first month's dues and just Hold make on, it before you go in there, Anthony, um, yeah. Tiffany had to jump in. She she works full-time here sure. at the house, and she had to use the computer real quick. Okay, Her no worries. Called. So let okay. me go in there in a second look at that. To that spot there where you pulled that report up, what was that under again? You just go to accounts. You go to your member Account. list. And okay. then you just take off everybody that's green and yellow. You only want to keep your red, canceled, collections, and now it's going to generate a list of everyone that's ever been a member of your club. That's no longer. It shows canceled, canceled, canceled. This is all free money right here. Any of these people that come back for whatever price you call them for, free money. Yeah, I don't care if you do $10 great. a month memberships. There's how many people on here? There's 50 here, right? So let's say we offered everyone here 10 bucks a month. That's $500 of EFP. That's good. And you have 723 people to market to. Yeah, no, I'm excited because I really think, um, you know, even in the slow times of summer, we could really significantly add to uh, the monthly income. Absolutely. The thing is, but this is stuff that normal people hit, don't want to do. We're going to be a well-oiled machine, you know. Yep. The, the kind of machines that you have don't matter. The, the kind of the, the paint on your wall doesn't matter, you know. It, it's just a matter of getting people in, giving, making them see that, yes, this club, I can get into the shape that I want to be in, and that's it. That's all they have to, to so feel. I, I know it's a great club because, you know, there's a lot of really in shape people in there, and I've walked around and asked them, what do you, what do you think about the club? What do you like about the club? Is there anything you don't like about the club? And almost all of them say, no, we love the club. It's great, you know. There's, everything's yeah. good. We we like coming here. We like the people. And so, yeah, no, there's just no reason why, why we can't, you know, get a lot busier and, and be happy doing this stuff. Well, well how about Should, this? If you're, if you're actually doing that, which is good, the in-shape people, you know, these people will come to the club, you know, if half the gym is broken down. They're going to come and do a workout. Um, I would say next time you're on the gym floor, ask people that are just average Joes that aren't in shape and ask what, how the club is, how can it be better for you to come more, you know, stuff like that, because that is going to be your demographic that you want to sell memberships to. The person that's already in shape, there's no sales involved in that. The person who's going to come into the club, they see the equipment that they like, they're going to buy a membership. There's no sales needed. The average person that wants a six pack that's never had one their whole life or you know, has a double chin and wants to come in and drop 20 pounds, that's the type of person that needs help. And you, you need to understand that demographic more. What makes them feel more comfortable, you know? That's a, good, that's a good idea. What's your feeling on what percentage of the gym, like from a business perspective, that you actually want using the gym versus not using the gym in like well, obvi obviously you want people to use the club but it's just how the gym works where 
you know, most likely everybody that comes into the gym, about 80% of them will use it the first month, and then you're not going to see them until six months when they want to cancel. And that's not your average. Now, the person that comes every day maybe represent 5 or 10% of the gym population. 10% is being very generous. Um, that's why powerlifting clubs really don't make it that much because they're marketing towards a 3% demographic, and they maybe will get 300 members if that. So their only me method of attack to make money is charging an arm and a leg because the equipment's so expensive, and they're not, they don't, they're not going to get 1,000 members like you guys have the ability to. So you have to see what kind of business you want. Do you want to market towards, like, people that come every single day? Then you're going to have to you have the best of the best equipment because those people know. Or do you want to market towards people that want to be in shape because these people don't know equipment. You know, you can have equipment that's 10 years old, and it makes no difference if you have the top-of-the-line model pre-core or life fitness or you have one from 10 years ago. They know no difference. So, right. you know, you have to see who do I want to market towards, myself I would say I would go for the average person that's looking to get in shape. That person, uh, you know, doesn't know. And that's one of our big, big problems at our club, Anthony, is the people that come, our core, they come fucking twice a day a lot of times. I mean, sometimes, literally, I was there last night. I had to be in there last night. I was there at, like, 9 o'clock last night, and some guy was on the uh, – on the treadmill, and I came in this morning at eight o'clock in the morning. He was in there. Sure. <laughs> wow. And yeah, that happens I mean, a lot. We got to get some know. free time. Yeah, you never, you never know. What, I mean, I need to get more of the people that I don't see as much in there. <laughs> right. And I, and we have a report for that. Here, let me go into that and show you. And this is what a manager should be doing. Your sales manager should be doing. It's called the new member usage report. We've already discussed that a person if, the, if that signs up, if they come one or two times the first month, if that, the next time you're going to see them is six months from now if they don't begin using the gym. So we have a report. Can you see my screen right now? Yeah. Okay. This report is called the New Member Usage Report. This is going to classify everybody that signed up in the last 30 days of red, yellow, and green. Everybody in the green is okay. We can leave these people alone. They're coming. They're, they're, they're probably gym people, and they're fine. Everybody in the red is going to cancel within six months. Everybody you see here, I guarantee you, if we look up your cancellation report in six months, you will see almost all of these names on it because they are signing up, and they're not even using the club. So look at this so they person. Should this person be, they should probably be contacted or something, right? Yes, that's what this report's for. So the manager can contact them, t say, hey, have you, uh, we noticed that you signed up uh, early this month. Have you been scheduled for orientation? Uh, would you like to come down to the club so this way we can work out, um, you know, give them, you know, cookie-cutter workout plans to give them something. These people, remember, these people know nothing about fitness, most of them. They just know to come in and get signed up. It's then your job to either put them on an orientation, even if it's a cookie-cutter workout, it's 10 times better than not showing them anything what to do. Because all these people, you know what they have in their head? Oh, I'm going to sign up. Let me get on the elliptical for 20 minutes, and then that's it. This person signed up 20 days ago. They haven't used the club once. There's a few of them that haven't. There's like yeah. four of them. So you think this person's going to pay you $40 a month for a year? You're highly mistaken. But... If I could get this person to come down and just give them a couple pointers of what to do to the gym, they will use it. No, everybody on this list that's red has a fear of looking stupid in the gym, okay? Yeah. They probably don't have gym experience. They're begging somebody just to tell them, what do I need to do, you know? Well, this would be a great thing for me and Mike to do, just call them up and get them down there. This is something I might get on real quick. Absolutely. Every, so everybody in the, in the yellow... And, uh, you know, the red should be called up, you know. And if you have trainers at your club, uh, this is the best way to get orientations. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to actually probably do that this week. Yep. So, I mean, it's funny. Look, look, at the, before I... look at the percentage of people that know how to work out. What did I say? Look, there's only three of them. Out of, this whole, out of everybody who signed up the last 30 days, you have three people out of everybody who signed up that actually know what they're doing. It goes exactly what I just said. Right, right. That's crazy. So, I mean, this is just how the gym works. 
So I mean, this is your this is I mean, plan of attack. Uh, is, you have to do member usage report. You have all of your canceled members. Number one, you have to call on the numbers twelve three before they go home. Uh, give a a daily goal to your manager. Uh, do a monthly goal. Say this is a monthly goal and break it down to daily and say this is a daily goal. What the gym needs to hit every single day. So she has something to strive for because if you have nothing to strive for and to and to attack. You're just going to sit in your chair and just wait for the door to swing. If you know yeah. that you need $500, then she's going to say, what else can I do? What can I do to make more money? She's going to actually ask you. And you're going to say, well, we, could, we have these. Well, we have 700 people that used to be members. We could call these people and say you're the marketing director and get them back in the club. Offer them whatever you want. I will give you the, the freedom of offering them $19 to $30 a month. Whatever you got to do to get them back in. Offer them a free month. Who cares? These people are dead to you. Yeah, anything you can get out of them is a bonus. Anything, anything. All right, well, this is great, Anthony. I appreciate your help and doing taking the time to do this today. I'm gonna relay this over to Mike. Um, we're gonna talk to her tomorrow. We'll give her these goals. Let's. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens next month with us really making a hard push on this. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I like doing these things. If I once I have free time, I might. I was actually even thinking of starting like either uh, a podcast or something with like for like gym owners or people that are managing. You should do that. That'd be awesome, actually. Like yeah. a like a Facebook podcast, kind of like Dave Champion. You ever heard of that guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, because listen, I, I promise you, Eric, you're not the only gym going through this. I, I, there's probably eighty percent of all the gyms out there today that are doing the same exact thing. They're just planning on let's sign up as many people as I can, sign as many people as I can, and they don't know how many people they're canceling. They don't know. Well, this how was my how biggest long. problem, though. I I never knew the numbers, and like if you're like a general and you don't know who's dying and what front, you don't exactly. know what the hell to do. You're like operating in the dark. Exactly. Yep. That's all that this is for. Just to let you see where you're failing in the gym, so this way you can plug that hole and you know and I mean, be actually like, comfortable. Just, just today alone, I mean, I, I I figured out about ten things that I didn't even know, and and the biggest one I think was. Holy shit, out of the 67 new members, almost all of them are terms. <laughs> That's so yeah. bad. Well, prepaid, yeah, you don't want to, you don't, you, terms are okay. Terms are monthly. It just They're just saying you have to agree to this term of, of, of paying monthly. Term is okay. Prepaids are yeah, bad news. That's what I meant. Pre prepaid. Yeah, yeah. So they're like yeah. people that you, you have to make a sale, a sale again with them. Yeah, prepaids are cancer. Punch cards are cancer, and I'll tell you why. Because let's say you're a gym that does punch cards, right? Okay, mm -hmm. we just went over that new member usage list. About 85% of those people signed up and never came, right? So if you sell a punch card for 10 visits, how much more money are you going to get out of that person besides that punch card? Nothing. You're probably yeah. never going to get another dime. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm so against punch cards, and I try to educate people saying, listen, I'm not telling you how to run your business, but this is why you should move towards month, even month to month, where they can cancel whatever they want because the 80% of your gym, the people that sign up, are, don't come back to the club even after they bought a membership. So you may have them using one punch. That's it. One punch card will last them the next We've 10 years. We've had <laughs> punch cards, so we, luckily we didn't do very many of them. But we made them expire at least. We were like, okay, they're going to expire and you know, try to get them to get in quicker. I think they that's, expired in like three months or four months even or worse. something like that. That's even worse. You know why? Because then they'll never buy another punch card again because they're like, well, I spent 70 bucks for that punch card. I used it once. I'm not doing that again. That's true. <laughs> you know? so I much just like the idea of just getting them on their credit card because, like, that thing you told me today about, hey, if you don't want to use the credit card, don't use it. It's yeah. just on there in case you forget to pay, pay cash. Come on down and pay cash every time because, like you, you said, you and me both know they're, they're probably one guy out of 100 is actually going to pay the cash, and it's just going to burn it. Well, nobody wants to put their credit card for anything, whether it's a gym membership, whether it's for online, and whether for even people, I mean, for Netflix, even people are struggling to put their credit card in. They don't, nobody wants their credit card knowing they're going to be billed every single month. They, want, they always want to be in control of doing it. And that's why month-to-month -month memberships are so important because you're explaining to them, look, you're still in control of this membership. You can still pay cash and you can still leave whenever you want. And as soon as you leave it to them and, and they know that they're in control, they're fine. They'll keep the membership for the next two years.
they, they because it's up to them to come and use the club or not. Um, right. So, right. And the other one I, I like today a lot was the uh, the guest pass idea. Sure. Okay, let's just see. You're not using the club that much. We don't want you to cancel. Let's turn it into a two guest, guest passes sure. a month. <laughs> Right. How uh, much is your how much is your guest pass for the day over there? It's like twelve bucks, ten, twelve bucks, depending on if they they're just coming off the street. It's twelve bucks. If it's somebody who's a member bringing a friend, it's ten bucks. Okay. So perfect. That's exactly it. They so they tell you what. All right. I understand, Eric. You want to cancel? Let's look up your accounts. Uh, let's see. So I'm going right into the cancel, and there you are. So I'm going to go look at your account. All right, I'm going to pretend to see. I see like one punch on here. I say, okay, so it looks like you're really not using the club. You're using pretty much sporadically. Uh, and let's see, you've been you've been with us for a while. It says, well, pretend that says like 12 months or whatever. You say, you've been with us for over a year. How about we do this? Why don't we switch this membership to like more of a guest pass membership, where a guest pass is only $12 a day. Uh, it basically is a month-to-month membership for 24 bucks, And it's just saying that you're going to use the club twice a month. If you use it for more than that, you can absolutely do that if you want to. But at least it's just saying all you need to do to make it worth your while is come twice a month. Would you? Would that sound like something a membership that worked for you? Almost everybody yeah, will I, say. I a lot of times that would keep somebody in the door there. Absolutely, I know it for a fact because I've done it. And everybody, what do you think everybody of those wants the, the sales. Our lady was thinking of doing the sales thing with. She came up with this idea, which I'm just glad she's thinking. She says, "Okay, well, this maintenance thing." She goes, "Why don't you give them two? And maybe we talked about this too. Like, give them two um, uh, passes, paid passes. So you say, you know, we'll also give you two paid passes for guests." Sure. that you can give to your guests that are paid. So they don't seem like they're free, but they have a value sign assigned to them. And then you give them like two $10 or $12 like little cards when they do their maintenance. We give those to you every year. Because one, they think they're also getting something back for giving something. But the thing that they're getting is something to give to somebody else that could potentially become a member. <laughs> sure, absolutely. I, that's, I mean, that always works. That's why even if I, if I worked at your club, and it, it was not busy, and I was going to attack this list, I would call up this, per- like this person right here, Lucas. Hey, Lucas, how's it going? It's Anthony. I'm actually the marketing director over here at Scotts Valley Gym. Um, I have a bunch of guest passes, or I would say, you know, a gift certi- I would say gift certificates. I have a bunch of, like, $75 uh, gift certificates um, that I have to give away. It looks like you've been in the club before. Uh, would you like to uh, have one of these gift certificates? I only have about... 10 left to give away, and I saw you were a member of the club, and I figured I'd give you a call. And, who came, and when they come down to the club, tell them it's good for it's a one-month gift certificate. They could either use it themselves, give it to somebody, whatever. This guy is now in front of me, and now I have a shot of closing him on a membership. Mm-hmm. But even if, even if I could say, I tell you what, you could trade that $75 gift certificate is, which is actually the cost of a membership, and we could get you started on a $19.99 membership right now. It's 20 bucks more in EFT than you had before. Whatever the case is, you could, you, you could get with your salesperson, and the, the biggest thing is to make the salesperson believe it's a good deal. If the salesperson believes in what they're selling, they will sell so much better. So you have to get involved, and either you create a membership that you want to sell and sell the salesperson on why it's so awesome, or you get with the salesperson and you both let her feel like she's involving herself on coming up with the membership and saying, you know, I like this. Because if a salesperson likes the membership they're selling, you're not going to have a problem with sales. Yeah, I agree totally. So, all right, well, how about that? I, I, I would just do the, 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 the daily numbers, give a yep. daily, give a, uh, try to give a daily goal, whatever you think. I, and you know what? Why don't you sit her down and ask her what she thinks the daily goal should be. And then if it's too low, you'd be like, no, too low. You know, we can't do $100 a day. The gym, we're not a 501c3 company. This isn't a charity. We need to profit and, you know, pay rent. So the, the daily, what we could do as a minimum is, is uh, 500, um, you know what, let's say $300, $100 in EFP a day. You know, if she, even, if, even if she only does 80% of that, you're still 10 times better than you were before. 
Yeah, would you say a, would you say on the EFT a hundred a day? I, I mean, that's for a club your size. You, I would do at least. I, it was just, for me. It's for, I see. I don't know the salesperson, so I don't know. I would set it for a hundred fifty. Hundred fifty dollars a day. That's there's a uh, little three thousand square foot clubs that have three times more of an EFT goal than that. And you're in California, yeah. so. I would start it off at $150 a day in EFT and say, look, I'm going to show you how to get to this number. You're not just giving her a number and saying, off to the trenches, right? You're, you're arming her and helping her how to get to this number. Well, this is how. We, we're averaging about two to three walk-ins a day, and I know this, and I know most of them are leaving. And whatever excuse they give you, I don't care what they say. Everybody has a credit card. Everybody can be sold, but you can't sell everybody. So we need to experience the art of the TO. If somebody is not going to sign up and they say they have to think about it, you have to grab somebody else. You have to find out. But before you grab somebody else, it can't be price. You have to listen to no three times, and you have to find out why they can't sign up before you do a TO. So this way, let's say you can't sell somebody. You go, Anthony, this is a, this is a run. Um, she's, she's lived here for about four months. She only has a year left. She's a student. You know, the price is a little bit too high. Um, you know, let's get, let's get her signed up. Then I could jump into that sale, know exactly what the problems are, and overcome them and make the sale. Gotcha, gotcha. Good notes are crucial, yeah. Absolutely. Well, our goals used to always be a, a break-even point for, you know, just breaking even was about 600 a day. It was just that's how much our bills and our, you know. Well, that's total expenses. growth. I'm talking EFT, you know. Yeah, uh, so... And so that make didn't include, yeah, the EFT. Yeah, make your TG 600 a day. I will make the EFT, you know, 150. And then if she goes, oh, my God, 150, first of all, that's not the right reaction we want to get. But if she does say that, you say, well, let me just show you something. I know that you're probably, probably going to sell about two people a day. So that right there is 80 bucks. How do we get the rest of the EFT? Well, we have 700 people to market towards. We're going to click on accounts at the top. We're going to go to the member list. And... You have, oh, hold on, let me, green and yellow, everybody that's canceled the collections, that's 700 people. You have lists upon lists upon lists. Even if you offer these people 15 bucks a month, you can get to that $150 EFT goal. And once we reach the point of where we called everybody, we could call this whole list again. Because I guarantee yeah. half of them is going to go to voicemail, and they're not going to even listen to it. You know, we've got two other lists. I got all the lists of all the members that were ever at the gym down the street that went out of business, and there's probably like you know another eight thousand people in that list. I, of, I, I can't believe you've been sitting on. I'd be calling that. I would be calling at least. So if you have that list, besides this list right here of in-house people, give her a goal of um, three calls an hour for that from that list that you have. Mm-hmm. Three three calls an hour is not a lot. Three, con- three contacts an hour. Yeah, three three calls from that list, whether it's this list or the other one. You have to at least to start off make three phone calls an hour. If you can't make three phone calls an hour, then this person is definitely not the right salesperson for you. Yeah, no, I think she'll be she'll be good on the call. She'll probably make twenty calls an hour. I mean, she's Perfect. she's she'll just run and gun in there, you know. Well, then you know what? Ask her how many calls that she wants to make an hour. And see, let's say she says 20, but like, how about this? I'm going to make it even easier for you. I only want you to make 10 calls an hour. She's going to, she's going to think, that, oh, my God. Contact. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we could well, measure. We had to make our calls, and when I was a recruiter, they, they used to always tell us contacts. So I want you to make X amount of contacts an hour. <laughs> okay. Well, we could make 10. Okay. So, or, or, or you could call it changing a life. I want you to change... Ten people's lives today, you know, get yeah. them involved in health and fitness. Okay, so, but we could measure if she's actually making phone calls. If we go to reports and go to account notes, yeah. after every time she makes a call, you, she has to do this. This is a, and it's not, doesn't take that much time, so you can't say this is taking forever. Okay, so now we have everybody. So we just called Lucas, right? We called them. Mm-hmm. He didn't answer. We have to put a note in here. Called Lucas wasn't home, called Lucas, offered $15, right? That's it. That's all she has to do. Done. And if she does that, 
you can actually see how many phone calls she made the whole day by going into your account notes. Everything that happened at the club today is going to show up on this, on this note. So if somebody makes a note, it's going to show up on here. So you could see how many times she called. So we could see right today, and remember Mike was talking about, oh, we need to know prepaids that are canceling. Look at all these prepaids that were in the task that, that, are, that expired already. Look, you had plenty of notice, 713, call prepaid account, expires in seven days. Nobody even did this task. Yeah, yeah no, I'm going to show Mike all this stuff. Look at all these, one, two, three, four, five. These people already canceled already. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing she's going to be in charge of, getting all those calls in before they cancel. Yeah. The other thing, too, is this right here. We warn you before people even get a, their credit card is going to be declined. See, it says right here, credit card expiring at the end of the month. Call this person. This person does not owe a dime so far. All we have to do is just update his credit card before he declines because it's a lot easier to just update credit card information than to call somebody that says, hey, you owe me 40 bucks. I need a new credit card. And I got to charge you $40. Right? It's a lot easier to make this phone call to say, I just need to update a credit card than to say, give me $40 and, and oh, I also need a credit card on the phone. So we, we give you warnings like this. Hey, call this person. Credit card's about to expire. And uh, nobody at the gym even, uh, did this task. This is the easiest task to do. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that's the nice thing about now with this new door system, we're, not, we're so freed up to not babysit and uh, hang out around the front. How's the door actually working now? Oh, it's awesome. Okay, good. Uh, right. It's pretty much done. We have one guy. We have a. They're coming to hook up. Uh, until we go 24 hours, we got a guy coming today. He's hooking up a switch that'll lock the door automatically at 10, and then sure. unlock it at 5 a.m. Gotcha. And then yeah. Uh, yeah, then our insurance company thing is hopefully we'll have it worked out. We're, we're Hoping we can mark it the 24-hour thing in around you know October, November for the, starting in the new year, going going full 24-hour, and we'll have all of our um, on-demand classes all ready to go. We got our, our aerobics room back, um, so we already have a projector up in there with big, nice sound system, so we can have those on-demand touch screens to pick classes for people, yeah. and then. Uh, we just are setting up an on-demand uh, spin class thing, too, which is pretty awesome. So just remember, all that money that you spent on there, if you just spent a quarter of that on sales, we wouldn't have an issue. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because remember, it was really, it really uh, educational fun. today, Anthony. I appreciate it again. I learned a lot today, and uh, it'll help. Worry. And just remember, next time you guys have a meeting and you're going to spend a lot of money on equipment like video on demand and all that stuff, tell them, say that stuff doesn't matter. We need to spend this money into sales. We need to go sales, marketing, because that's going to give us more money where we can eventually buy the equipment. You don't buy the equipment and hopefully hope people walk through the door because the equipment's not going to sell people. A, a talented sales guy is going to sell the person if they do their job right. And if there's one right across the street from you, you're losing out, and you just spent all that money on equipment for nothing. Yeah, no, I mean, I think what I've learned the most is we've made a lot of mistakes, and let's not keep making the same ones. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, no, no, that's, that's good that you guys actually realize, say, listen, this is the problem. We know what the problem is. Let's move forward with, with a plan so we're not doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a different result. So, all right, man, well, just keep me, keep me updated, and uh, just I remember. Will. I will. Thanks again, and I'll and I'll you're probably going to notice, you know, I'll touch base with you in a week or so, or maybe two weeks, and I'll say, hey, let's check out those numbers and let's let's see how much they've grown. Sure. Now that we're on it. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. You got it, Eric. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Yeah. Take care. Have a good day.